Tennessee walking horse were created in Middle Tennessee in the 18th century where they were used on plantation farms as a working horse for transporting goods. They're a combination of a variation of different horses which includes the thoroughbreds, Canadian Pacers, Saddlebreds, Morgan, American Standard Breds and the Narragansett Pacers. The first stallion was the Black Allen in 1886 and ever since the breed has grown. They have three gates, which is the flat foot walk, which is a four beat gate, running walk, which is a four beat gate, and the canter, which is a three beat gate, which are very different from the ordinary horse from a walk, crossing canter. The Tennessee walking horse are quite unique in the fact they have a high stepping forelimb. So as the forelimb uh, lifts up, their head nods in rhythm with the rise and fall of the hooves. They're mainly used for show, trail and pleasure riding, but most recently they've been seen in the showing industry. After briefly going through the history of the Tennessee walking horse, you can see over the years how they're now being predominantly used in the show ring. Unfortunately, these exaggerated actions of the forelimbs, which you can see, are down to the training methods and practices which these horses are undergoing. Today, I'm going to go through these training methods and practices and through looking to the stakeholders which are also involved in this and the shows which these horses partake in. I'm also going to look into the solutions as well to see if we can actually save these horses from the cruelty that they're So the training methods and practices which the Tennessee walking horse undergoes is called soaring. So this is where caustic chemicals are applied onto the forelimb and uh, cause a burning sensation to the forelimb of the horse and on palpation it's sensitive to touch. To increase the sensitivity they will also cover this in cling film which is called baking which enhance the effects that these chemicals are causing. Another one is pressure shoeing so this is where they cut the hoof too quickly and insert um, uncomfortable objects under the shoe of the horse and put this back onto um, a platform which also can be known as stacking. Um, another form is stewarding, so this is where the trainers prepare the horses for when they actually go to the shows. So at the con shows, there are stewards which check the forelimbs of the horse to make sure that no illegal activity is occurring. Um, unfortunately, these trainers are aware of this and train the horses to stand quietly um, upon palpation of the horse's legs. The next one is chains, so this is where chains are placed around the fetlock of the horse. Um, so obviously this is encouraging the horse to lift its forelimbs a lot higher than when the chains are removed. The horse should then remember uh, the high forelimb action that they undergo. This forelimb action is called the big lick and it's very desirable in the show ring. This is how the chains are put around the fetlocks to increase forelimb action. Here you can see the chemicals being applied to the forelimb which is causing a burning sensation to the horse which causes them to lift their forelimbs higher. What else they will do is they will wrap the forelimb which is also known as baking and increases the burning sensation and the effects that the chemicals are having on the leg. You can see the damage which the chemicals are causing to the horse's legs from how sore and red the skin is. Even to touch the horse is really sensitive. partaken is the Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. This first started in 1939 in Shelbyville and has, start, and has occurred every year in early September ever since. It attracts around 30,000 spectators and around 2,000 horses compete in this 10 day event. As you can imagine, there's a lot of pressure onto the trainers to create these spectacular horses which is why these illegal practices occur and the welfare of the horses are not put first. Protection Act first came in in 1970 to try and protect the horses from soaring, which they believe first started in the 1950s and grew ever since. Unfortunately, the Horse Protection Act wasn't very successful, which is why the PAST Act was introduced. 
and this is supported by uh, veterinary people, farriers, etc. to try and support this and protect the horses. The next thing that was put in place is the um, rule of no chains to be allowed at shows which occurred in 2017 and the use of stacks in 2018. With the use of stacks the horse had to be gradually put back into normal shoes to prevent any further damage to the anatomy of the legs, for example, the tendons and ligaments, which have um, been obviously um, propped up and stretched, so returning them back to their original shape had to be done gradually in order for returning to full health. The ethical theories for these trainers towards the Tennessee walking horse is contract which is morality based on agreement so the trainer has an agreement with the Tennessee walking horse to basically make money so the horse unfortunately has to undergo this cruelty to make the trainer money um, another one would be utilitarian so for the greater good of people uh, for example only a handful of uh, Tennessee walking horses are being harmed during the training and earning money um, but there's the family of the trainer which are being looked after from the winnings of the horse so for the greater good of people. The only solution for the Tennessee walking horse is to go back to the traditional classes and remove the stigma of having these high falling paces also known as the big lick also potentially reducing the prize money so people are doing it for the horse and for fun rather than for money and to make gains out of the 